I haven't told you what I require you to do. So have the paper and the pen next to you and lie on your mat. So the last day of training's always got the vague air of pajama party about it, doesn't it? <laughs> Sorry? Yeah. The pajama party. Oh come in your pajamas. Yeah. Anyone need a paper, piece of paper? Jen's got paper if you haven't got any. So it's the, some of the people sitting around, lying around me have already, um, we've already had a laugh about their response that I'm going to ask you to draw something and the response being, I can't draw. Um, you know, I've got a friend who always says, I'm not creative. She's the most creative parent I have ever seen. Like she always generates amazing amounts of possibilities for the way to interact with her children. And, you know, they're now in their late twenties. She's been for a long time. And she says, oh, I'm not creative. She's incredibly creative. So this I'm not sort of statements, they're so interesting when you catch people doing it. Like Philippa's 84-year-old, I'm not a dancer. Well, turn the lights out and have a crack. Um, so lying on your back, take a moment to scan yourself. And in particular, uh, the, the relative size of you. Now, this is quite an you know, um, you can draw yourself according to which side, what feels the biggest and then what's the next biggest and then what's the next biggest bit. You can have a social construct in your mind of what you look like, i.e. what I would see, or try and tap into actually what it feels like to you internally. Like how big does your nose feel? How big do your eyes feel? Like try and catch that elusive little um, schema. Remember I said it's, it's not usually explicit. Try and catch it. It's actually because it is what we practice scanning for. And then constantly your social construct will come and say, well, no, your right leg cannot be that much bigger than your left leg. So, go, so start to scan. And immediately what pops into mind is, is what is your biggest bit? And then the next biggest and then the next biggest. Now slowly go between drawing those bits then coming back and scanning for what's the next biggest. So just use that biggest, what feels biggest to you. And then keep coming back to the lying on the back and scanning and then keep adding to your drawing. So this is not uh, an artistic pursuit. It's trying to catch your little homunculus. What do you sense as being the biggest in you at this point in time, knowing that if we did it in an hour's time, it might be different. So try and get this proportional you. Does your right leg feel bigger than your left leg or your right big toe feel bigger than, you know, whatever? So if you've just hit your thumb with a, with a hammer, chances are your thumb's going to be huge. If you've just had a tooth out, one side of your jaw will feel, feel huge. Or if it's, had an, if it's still under anesthesia, it, will, it won't even be there. You'll be jawless. Something like this. You're doing your personal, what you're sensing, not what you think it is, but what you sense in yourself, what feels the biggest. Yeah. Yeah. For you. So if you're lying there, for example, and your right shoulder feels the biggest part of you, 
draw that first and then start adding all the bits that feel less big until you get to the part of you that feels the smallest. So there's a, remember the brain oscillates between sidedness and unity. So there might be a difference between one side and the other. And if you end up looking like a dolphin, that's perfectly fine. Nobody's going to see it unless you show them. You can have a little speech bubble coming out laughing if you want to. I remember doing a workshop with one of my colleagues in Adelaide, Susie Fraser. She's an actor. And um, I think this is a Mabel Todd thing. We made a little sculpture of ourselves with clay. She brought clay and then we did an ATM and then we did another little clay thing. It's really, it's fun. Another Adelaide practitioner, Catherine Truman that I talked about, who's, uh, she, used, she used to run workshops for other fine artists where they would do some creative thing. Um, she makes a lot of jewellery and then they'd do a couple of ATMs and then they'd come back and do some more creative acts. So you can, you can really mix up. When you start doing workshops, you can really do interesting things. You don't have to be purist in that sense. Okay, so finish up your picture and uh, then lie on your back and we'll get ready for the, we'll continue on, not get ready for, because you already are ready for the ATM. We'll continue with the ATM. It's always interesting, the drawing stuff, because the, people, yes, the social norms and the cultural influences kick in about making it look aesthetically pleasing and 
recognisable and all this sort of stuff to really kind of capture some quite visceral percep- self-perception is, uh, is very interesting. Of course, they do this um, with, uh, you know, art therapy with people with chronic pain, for example. Okay, good. So everybody's lying and sensing uh, your right leg compared to your left leg. What about it? Maybe you're comparing. 